All right, <clears throat> thought I'd throw a quick video together about this 58 Chevy pickup that I put together for my friend Trevor. Uh, still got to put the hood on it yet, do a couple small finishing touches, but it's pretty much done. Just got it back from the alignment and exhaust shops. He's going to put a bed floor in it yet. I am not spare tire. A couple other little piddly things. He wants to put a radio in it yet, but I'm pretty much wrapped up. He's going to help me put the hood on it tomorrow before he picks it up and send it home with him. So it's a 58 Chevy Apache 3200 or 32, which is basically a long wheelbase half ton. I guess we'll start at the front here. It's kind of a neat pickup. It's got a factory chrome grill. It's got the chrome trim that goes around the, the windows and the back of the cab and such. Uh, we did put chrome headlight surrounds in it. Uh, the originals were painted. It's a pretty dry pickup. It's got a little bit of rust in the fenders. The other side's a little bit worse. Uh, I did put floors in it. They weren't terrible, but we figured while we were at it, we stick floors in it. Factory chrome front bumper on it. Radiator was missing, so uh, about a $150 eBay special straight out of China. Seems like it works pretty good. Uh, it's about 30 degrees out here right now, so I haven't had a ton of time to run it and see how, how warm it gets. Might have to add a fan shroud. Right now it's just a direct fan on the uh, long water pump. Plenty of room in there. Stock radiator hoses for a V8 application pickup, so that panned out pretty well. So I guess moving back, that V8's out of a, like a 77 Chevy two-wheel drive pickup. Literally know nothing about it, but it had, uh, it was supposed to run, so we threw it in there. And it seems like it runs all right. It's got a few oil leaks. I just put valve cover gaskets in it. So there's a little residual oil on there yet. The transmission was super greasy, turbo 350, nothing special again there. HEI, Quadrajet. I just kind of tried to leave it all stock stuff so you can buy um, parts on a Saturday at your regular parts store. Use Speedway biscuit style engine mounts. I love these things, work great. All you got to do is, you know, figure out where you want it to sit fore and aft. I, I left a little bit of room on the back. I could have went further back, but I still got some room ahead here too. If I really wanted to, I could put a spacer to get that fan a little bit tighter. I could maybe get a clutch fan in there. I don't know. I do wish this radiator sat a little bit tighter to the uh, cowl support. Give me a little bit more room back here, but I suppose if you ever wanted to put AC on it or trans cooler or something like that. And that, that's the nice thing about this radiator. It's got the trans cooler line in it as well. Uh, I was able to use the uh, OEM transmission cooler lines from that 77 Chevy pickup as well. I shortened them up and cut them off and flared them. Uh, I got a like a $1,200 Black Friday special eBay Chinese piece of garbage Mustang 2 front end. I, the guy was just a pain to deal with that I got it from. I had some bad parts. The rack was leaking out the, the input shaft. Uh, I had a, both A arms are screwed up. One was stamped wrong, one was bent when they put the bushings in. So that, that was just more work than it had to be. It went in pretty easy, but it was just the seller that sucked to deal with. Uh, continuing with that steering and then it's got uh, disc brakes four and three quarter bolt pattern they are drilled for both patterns so I think you could put it to four and a half but I ordered four and three quarter thinking that then I could find a GM 70 to 81 Camaro Firebird rear end that turned out to be a lot harder to find than I thought it would be and then four and three quarter inch 15 inch wheels are like hen's teeth I could not find them I found like two around here and they were like six and five inch narrow ones i had one seven so we just bought these wheel vintiques they're 15 by eights they're uh 235 75 tires it's kind of the looks that he was going for he didn't want a super huge tire he didn't want it too small either so they're they're the same size all the way around and he did buy he found he found another 15 by seven stock wheel and he's gonna mount another tire on it for the spare tire to finish it off the steering column's out of a 77 Dodge van. I did have to move the shift linkage over to the other side here so that it would get the right pivot on it. Uh, the shift linkage is basically like a 77 Chevy pickup too. I just used all the existing stuff and, and mounted the bracket onto the frame rail for the for the pivot on there. I'll get a light and see if we can shine now and see what's going on. So I don't know if you can see that real well. But yeah, it's just OEM 77 Chevy stuff. You can see the bottom of that column. I did have to make 
a new bushing to go on the bottom of the column. And then those are all just, there's a double U-joint there, uh, standard U-joint down at the bottom. I used double D shaft, and then I had to, seeing how I used two joints, I had to have a, a carrier up there, a, a Heim joint, I guess, if you will, uh, to clear everything. The It's tight around the exhaust manifold, but it worked all right. I did put a power brake booster kit from eBay. Same guy, turns out, that got it from Corona, California, which is funny with this coronavirus stuff we got going on, but that also was kind of a piece of crap, and I was, it, it turned out all right, but I had to get some parts from him that weren't included in the kit, and just dealing with that guy was terrible. Bro-Speed is his store on eBay, so beware, don't buy anything from that guy. Uh, then, like I said, I had to move that shift sh uh, arm from this side of the column to the other from the van otherwise it would have pulled when you shifted on that linkage and it had to be a push which is fine again that's pretty tight to the manifold but I got plenty of room there you can see I had to do a little bit of trimming on the inner fenders nothing special he bought this uh, LMC wire harness kit for the headlights again kind of a piece of crap but or it's it's actually really good but they had some wires mixed up so that the headlights the low beams would be on slightly when the high beams were and anyway we figured out that they had a couple of wires flipped around after they sent us a second wire harness uh stock gm alternator uh wired it up to the ignition so that it energizes and then just kind of did the quick shortcut way hooked it onto here i did have to get a straight water neck uh, the 77 one is angled out to the side. I like using factory hoses, factory stuff, so that way you can get parts at a store on a Saturday. Or, and I just hate flex hoses. They're cheesy, they're ugly. This has got that clean factory style look. Uh, we did put a new thermostat, uh, vacuum advance, plugs, wires, cap, rotor, all that good stuff. The quarter jet probably could use a rebuild. It actually seems like it runs okay. Uh, make sure you ground your engine, ground the body. I think there's a, yeah, there's a ground strap there. Put a new battery box in it because that was hacked out to put some huge battery in it. And it is pretty tight to the dipstick right there. So that's, that's one thing that I had to put a battery box in anyway. Or had a, what did it cut that one up even more? What else do we got? Oh, on that, on that master cylinder, I like them under the floor because it's clean. It's factory looking. You never see it. Um, I don't like them on the firewall. It just kind of clutters everything up and there's they're really not designed to be on the firewall without adding a bunch of support So I guess on that note, we'll go inside the cab. I'll show you what I did uh, the stock hole for the Master cylinder was right there. I had to move it back Trevor sure will get a surprise when he goes to open that cover. I made a neat, neat little cover Use the bead roller, put a bead around it so you can just flip her open. It is kind of a pain to add master or the fluid to the master cylinder brake fluid, but it's not something you got to do very often. Check it in the spring; it should be good to go. Uh, he did buy the the transmission. This had a four-speed in it. The transmission cover was pretty tough shape, so we bought this new one. And I did have to clearance it a little bit for the Turbo 350, so I just kind of cut it to where it needed to be. And then I rolled a piece of sheet metal over my knee and take welded it all together. Turned out all right. You can see a few of the holes that I had to fill on the floor. This is the stock steering cover. Of course, that's where the clutch pedal was. Filled that in. Uh, I guess he bought that neat little dimmer switch knob. Uh, then I built this little cover here that you can take on and off to get the pedal open or get get access to it and it seals it up like i said this is the stock um, steering column cover just kind of put that under to fill that hole so you could you could still take the column in and out i did have to or i did shorten up the steering column mount a little bit so that you can i don't know trevor's a big guy i'm a big guy it gives us a little bit more room for our bellies and our knees getting when you're getting in and out uh, and so this clamp, I opened up the radius on that a little bit as well because the steering column is a little bit bigger diameter. I use the, like a 77 Chevy pickup gas pedal. I love these things. They're flexible, they're forgiving. I like the cable because you don't have to have direct routing. I did have to make a little standoff to 
mount the pedal because there's not really a flat spot on the firewall. And then I had to do a little heating and bending just so that the pedal goes all the way down to the floor because again, for leg room. I like these because they got the same throw as the quadra jets, the, the carburetor that you're using so that that way you don't have to, the geometry, the math's already done, they're cheap, they're abundant. If you screw one up, you throw it away and you can always cut the rod off and put like a, I thought about using a stock style pedal, but it was in such bad shape and binding and we can always do that later. Like I said, he's gonna put a radio in it. So we call this thing all Kenneth, Kenneth Schwab. He's got his name in the cluster even. I'm gonna leave that there. Like I said, I just got it back from alignment. I gotta pull the wheel, straighten that out and then we'll put the horn cap on it yet. Uh, he had a radio in it. This thing's been painted a million times. It was originally this pink color, kind of neat. It's got a neat color to it. It's got a lot of character and Trevor wanted to keep it like that. So it had a 235 with a four speed and then it had split manifold and dual stacks. Well, Kenneth, he uh, knew it was up. I guess somebody in Dickinson, North Dakota redid the seat. The gas tank, I just cleaned it up and it actually looked pretty good inside, so stuck some new hoses on it. It's got all new fuel line, new, all new rubber hoses and stuff. The headliner's still in it, in case he's missing the dome light cover. Uh, all the gauges are working. Uh, oil's mechanical, fuel gauge is working. I didn't hook the amp gauge up, because I just don't like amp gauges running all that. I mean, basically you're running the resi the wire that powers the complete pickup through there, and, and you just hear lots of horror stories. So. Didn't do that. Uh, temp gauge is hooked up. Speedometer cable is hooked up. It was actually the, the same length, same threads and everything, but something must be wrong with the cable because the speedometer is not working. And there you can see that Dodge column. I just like columns that don't have the ignition switch on it. Again, factory stuff. I'm not a huge fan of Mopar stuff, but he didn't want to buy an aftermarket column. And had it laying around. He does want to put a heater core in it yet too. And I mean, he's going to make pretty much everything work in there. You can see I put the floors in. That's where I seamed them all together. They came out pretty good. Like I said, they weren't bad, but we thought since we're in here, I'm gonna do her upright. It needs door pins yet, but they are a miserable project on these pickups. So I said, just drive it for a while. Put new armrests. This window was cracked, so we replaced that. He did replace this stainless that was missing. It's got this neat headache rack. I guess Trevor's out in the oil fields. They call these guys roustabouts this guy was at one time so he's got that the heavy duty aftermarket rear bumper it's built like a tank the local guy uh, did the dual exhaust it's got like some big they're kind of like a glass pack but they're not a glass pack uh, I made my own transmission mount because the $70 aftermarket one I bought would not clear the brake booster so <laughs> had to make one from scratch uh, side note, a 65 Chevy Impala Power Glide V8 drive shaft bolts right into these things. I think I had to use a bastard joint on this back end. Uh, again, 70 to 81 Camaro rear or differential. It's got the Camaro brake hose, everything, put all new brakes. I had to put an axle seal on one side, so when I slid the axle out, I opened the recover, it was supposed to be a 342 posi, it turned out it was 256 one wheel wonder. Wah, wah, wah. The shocks, I think, are, again, 77 Chevy half ton pickup. They were the right length. The springs were just shot. They used to haul coal with this thing, and they were shot, and they were stacked up, and they were broken and curved, and I just couldn't get the pickup to sit level, so we bought some. And then all the bushings were shot too, so we bought new shackles. And bushings uh, bought new u-bolts it's basically a trailer u-bolt uh replaced all that stuff i think they're posy super slide springs really nice springs and i think that's about it back here uh the tail lights were just in such tough shape the buckets were all rusty i couldn't get a good ground so like 80 bucks on ebay got some new ones wired up everything's everything's working there we don't have blinkers wired up but He's got a hand signal, lives out in the country. With those, with these 235s, I did have to space, put a little spacer on there. I put a 5 8 inch spacer just because it's tight in here. The 230, like, I got a three quarters of an inch on either, on either side, so that's why I needed to go with that 5 8 inch spacer. Maybe it's three quarter, but anyway, 
Um, I did have space it out. Everybody on the internet said you these are the rear ends to use for these pickups. Turns out, no, something a, a hair wider would be all right. If I went with a real narrow, like a 15, 15 by six wheel, it'd probably be pretty good. It's got this neat rack on the back. You can un unthread this coupler, spin it around. Turns out that that you can't spin it up to here and thread it onto this. These are different lengths. So I don't know if they had like a vise mounted there or something else. This pickup's had a pretty rough life. Yeah, like I said, they had the radio of some sorts in it and they moved the antenna from up here. You can see they filled the hole and they, I don't know what they stabbed that hole with, but it's pretty crude. Like I said, there's that. The fender's a lot worse on this side. Cab corners, are, are, they got some holes in them, but pretty dry. It's too bad they cut a hole in that cab up there because this thing is super dry above the windshield which is really common on these things in this area especially. And I think that's, that's about that's about it. That's full tour there on Kenneth. Um, looks, I think I got a little over 100 hours of labor in this thing. There's probably some more that I kind of forgave him on and Trevor did come down a couple times and help me out. Uh, had help from quite a few different people over the project so yeah that's it I think pretty much about wraps are up all right everybody thanks for uh, coming on this tour with me walking around old Kenneth here um, like share subscribe check out my other videos thanks for watching have a good one